reading the title and seeing the intro, you probably already know what this video is going to be about. And to be honest with you, to say that I am disgusted and embarrassed beyond belief is an understatement. But I think it's important for me to give you some background on the situation, especially to those of you who are hearing about this story for the first time. So the video that I showed in the intro is from a transgender rally in Vancouver, Canada. As you saw that little excerpt that I showed you, I'm going to show you the full video in just a second, but that little excerpt that I showed you saw somebody getting assaulted. Now, who is that getting assaulted? The man you see in the video, his name is Chris Elton. Um, he's actually a conservative activist. He's one of the most popular conservative activists, um, along with things like Project Veritas and things like that. In fact, to be honest with you, out of all of the conservative activists, he's one of the few that I genuinely respect thoroughly, completely, have a bunch of respect for this guy. <clears throat> and... The reason why I have so much respect for him is because he shows up, he explains his point, and he takes up space. His form of protest is to be present, not to physically or vocally assault somebody in order to prove his point. Which is why, to me, seeing what happened to this man this past weekend not only made me furious and disgusted me beyond belief, but compelled me to make this video. So this isn't attached to any one of my podcast episodes or anything like that. This is its own video. So this required its own time because what you're about to see is something that can only be seen in some sort of weird fucking movie where the world is just turned upside down and equality means being a fucking fascist. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me show you the full video and we'll talk in just a second. Uh, why, why do you think they're, they're, they're getting that kind of representation? I mean, it uh, clearly was uh, aggressive, violent assault. You suck. You suck. Fuck you. Fuck you. You're not wanted. Fuck you. You're, you're a fucking idiot. You're a fucking idiot. I don't know what to say. I guess these police officers are mostly indoctrinated as well. They're afraid of the mob. I think, I think they're afraid that if they do anything to actually keep law and order, that they'll end up being on the end of this verbal abuse. So it's just cowardice from everybody all around. People probably want to know, how do you keep your composure? Fuck you! What's up? Fuck you. How do you keep your Fuck composure? You. Fuck you! 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 How can these people expect to be taken seriously? The more that I watch that video, the more I get angrier and angrier and angrier and angrier and angrier because the fact that somebody thinks it's okay to put their hands on somebody because they disagree with them, whoa, what a surprise. There was pushback at a protest. Somebody counter-protested your protest. That definitely doesn't happen often at all. And even if it didn't, in what world is it okay to start a fight because someone is just protesting? Is that not what you're trying to do? The, the violence in this person's eyes the whole time, you can genuinely see it escalate slowly. You can literally see this person just going from normal human being to full-blown monster in just a matter of seconds. So he's standing there, he's just doing his thing, he's trying to explain his point to the reporter who's asking him questions, trying to understand what the fuck is going on. The person telling him to go fuck himself is screaming and screaming and screaming, trying to get attention, comes out of nowhere out of left field. In fact, they literally come out of the back to, you know, expose their dominance and, and present their presence, something that men do. Men exert their dominance. Violent men like this, they exert their dominance in scary, off-putting ways. And what's funny to me is the fact that 
he doesn't fucking care. Like, he literally gives this person no attention. <laughs> this person gets really upset that they're that he's not giving them attention. And so they start getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer until they're, like, literally right there in front of his face. And then he's literally like, girl, your breath stinks. <laughs> girl, <laughs> like, guy, I can smell your retainer. <laughs> And and to be honest with you, l like I asked initially, how can these people expect to be taken seriously when you're constantly upholding the stereotype of violent men? Like you're constantly raising up the stereotype of violent men who are on hormones that they cannot control. It seems like it's a pattern. It's a pattern. It's a pattern to be aggressive and violent. I, there's countless videos like this on the internet. and And I'll be honest with you. Out of all the things that I've thought about, maybe I'm the only person who's thought about this, but if these individuals are acting like this for a man just standing there, a man that maybe most of them have never even heard of, oh, who is, what's his name again? Hold on. <laughs> who is Chris Elston? A lot of people are not going to know who that is. There's so many activists that I don't know the names of, so I wouldn't blame somebody for not knowing who he was. So... Some random activist shows up that they don't have a vendetta for. Imagine if somebody like J.K. Rowling. Think of me in my crazy land. Imagine somebody like J.K. Rowling being in the vicinity of something like this. J.K. Rowling, the person that this community has basically set up as public enemy number one. J.K. Rowling has been deemed public enemy number one. And to my knowledge, I don't really know anybody else who has a similar title. I'm going to do a whole video on the Hogwarts legacy thing, but I don't know anybody else who has a similar title of somebody who has literally hated by this community and attacked by this community vigorously all the fucking time. So imagine if these activists, I like to call them actors, imagine if these actors genuinely got themselves in contact with the person they deemed public enemy number one. Imagine if her address for whatever reason was doxxed and they went to protest at her house. If they got even a sliver of a scent of her, they would have ripped her apart. They would have ripped every single follicle out of her fucking head. And this isn't the first time that something like this happens. Somebody getting violent, a trans person getting very violent, an alleged trans person. I like to call people like this men in wigs because that's what they are. They're men in wigs. Trans people want to blend in with society and live normal lives. That's all they want to do. Trans people want to blend into society. They don't want to look like someone's Uncle Earl. No, Earl. You've had too many Heinekens, dude. Relax. But yeah, this isn't the first time. Another alleged trans individual, again, men in wigs, we've discussed this, went viral a few years ago for having an interesting reaction to being misgendered at GameStop. You probably already know the clip that I'm talking about. Um, just for some context, it's definitely ma'am. Um, but just in case you forgot, let me refresh your memory. You're gonna give me my fucking money back. Excuse me, sir, there's a young man in here. Excuse me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. I can call the police if you'd like me to. You need to settle down. You need to settle down and mind your business, okay? Ma'am. Once again, ma'am. I said both of you. No, you said sir. Once again, it's ma'am. I actually said both of you guys. It was a general. Right beforehand, you fucking said sir. Sir? Okay. Motherfucker, take it outside. If you want to call me sir again, I will show you a fucking sir. I apologize. Motherfucker. I apologize now. I need your corporate number. Because I'm going to talk, call them and talk about how I was misgendered several times in this store. I apologize. I need your corporate number now. Get it for me now. I'm going to ask you to calm down and stop cussing. Give me your corporate number. Well, I'm going to ask you for the fifth time to stop calling me a man. Because quite clearly I am not. And I apologize. I'm sorry for that, ma'am. I will get you that number. Is that okay? Yes, get it for me now. I'm asking you to stop Get it for me now. I'm not cussing. I'm not cussing. Get me the damn number now. Please. Ooh! Yeah, my fault. Yes. Oh! My fault. Yes. I will get you that number right now. Okay. No, you're just going to keep bumping your gums. You're just going to keep bumping your gums and disrespecting trans people in this store, which I plan on telling the entire LGBTQ community. You're going to lose money over this. Sure. 
is it, ma'am? Are you sure, sir? Because from the looks of how angry you got, are you even sure that it's ma'am? Because I'll be honest, somebody who knows themselves isn't going to react that way because somebody uses the wrong pronoun. And I can understand it from a teenager who's being brainwashed on TikTok that it would destroy your soul to be misgendered. But as a fully grown adult who knows themselves, allegedly, a reaction like that seems a little uncalled for unless you yourself felt a little offended by that because you agree. Which at that point, then maybe you are the problem. And this was actually the first bit of violent behavior showing its head because this video is actually from a few years ago. And a few years ago, people were shocked and disgusted by this person's behavior. They literally immediately became a meme. Immediately. They immediately became a meme. It is ma'am. It's ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I mean, sir. I mean, boss. I mean, poobah. It is ma'am. Here comes the spider. Ma'am. There goes the spider. Ma'am. Spider. Ma'am. Spider. Ma'am. Friendly neighborhood. Motherfuck. Alexa, what do you do? Excuse me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. Okay. They immediately became a meme because everybody understood that this was fucking crazy. And even trans people back then, the trans activists were act were saying, no, y'all, this isn't cute. This isn't cool. We shouldn't be acting like this at GameStop where children are buying games. Shouldn't really be acting that way at GameStop. It's a little inappropriate. Maybe don't bring your weird gender confusion into a GameStop. Maybe know who you are first before you come in the GameStop because I'm a gay, I'm a gay guy. I'm a gay male. Do you know how many times on the phone somebody goes, yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Of course, ma'am. I appreciate that, ma'am. I work in customer service. And I work on the phone. I work from home. People can't see me in person. Do you think I'm going to correct every single person that calls me ma'am just because I sound a little bit more feminine than your average guy? No. Do you think I'm going to fucking cry about it? No. Do you think I'm going to get offended? No. Do you think I give a flying fuck? No. Do you know why? Because at the end of the day, my shift ends at 7, and every other Friday, I get paid. So I don't care. Because, sweetie, oppression may be currency for you, but it's not for me. Oppression may be currency for people like you, but it's not for me. And it's not for people like me. People like me who are level-headed who aren't fucking affected and sensitive to fucking everything. Because I've said this to so many people in my life that I've had these kinds of conversations with, but at one point, when you cry wolf every fucking time, something fucking happens, even if it's not really a big deal, people stop fucking caring, and they start caring less. So when every two seconds, you're calling something transphobic, or homophobic, or racist, or xenophobic, or whatever other fucking phobic there is in the fucking book, because every three fucking months, there's a new one. If every two seconds, you're always crying wolf, eventually people are not going to fucking give a fuck anymore. And guess what? This is the same reason why LGBT sentiment is going down in the United States. If you don't believe me, here are some statistics. I'm not lying to you. This is a real fucking thing. People are over it. People are over the complaining. They are over the complaining. They are tired of us complaining. Get up from your knees. Get up from the floor. We're no longer oppressed anymore. Sweetie, Stonewall was a long time ago. Girl, I think we've already hit the 50-year mark, if I'm not mistaken, not, not, not even a few years ago. We've already hit the 50-fucking-month, 50-fucking-year uh, mark. Get the fuck over it. Get the fuck over it. Because I guarantee you that nobody in the comments is going to be able to point me to a law that directly states that us as gay people have less rights than regular people. Regular people. You can't tell me that. You can't tell me that heterosexual people have more rights than we do just because there are homophobic people out there. Because maybe when I go to the DMV, they treat me the exact same shitty ass way as they treat the next person behind me. And the one in front of me. 
We're all getting treated like shit. Nobody is trying to pinpoint me because I'm gay. One, because nobody fucking cares. And two, because I don't make it a personality trait. It happens to be part of who I am. But I don't go places wearing a fucking pride shirt, a fucking rainbow shirt, and looking like a motherfucking fruit roll-up everywhere I go because everybody has to fucking know I'm gay because it's a personality trait. It's not. Like, I'm not cool than anybody else just because I happen to be gay. And you're not cool than anybody else just because you happen to wear a fucking wig and call yourself a girl. You're not. You're not. And again, I do want to go ahead and state this. I'm not talking about trans people. I'm talking about men in wigs. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, I've already shown a few in this video, but here they are again. Men in wigs. People who pretend to be women to be treated better in society because they're fucking perverts. And there's no other way to get around, you know, being a lackluster, mediocre, 45-year-old male who never got married and never had kids. Unfortunately, there's no other way around that. So there's some people who feel the need to mutilate themselves and change their gender because we live in a society that rewards psychotic behavior like that. Not real trans people. Not people experiencing gender dysphoria. Men in wigs. Men in wigs. They thems. People who have they them and he her and she it in their bio. So you are a binary gender. So you're choosing male or female, but you're also a they them. So somehow you're a gender and no gender at the same time. Sweetie, I'm sorry. But we don't live in the year 3,500. You don't get to switch your gender like you're some robot in two seconds. I'm sorry. You're living in the wrong era. Sorry, sweetie. I am so sorry, Taylor. But you're living in the wrong era, Miss Swift. Okay? All I'm going to tell you. All I'm going to say. And further, to further my point, if it was ma'am just a few years ago, and now I'm showing you a video of somebody actually being assaulted in a public space surrounded by police officers, you really do not see the correlation from where we were to how violent and extreme things have gotten. Because I see it. I see it and I'm worried. I am worried. Because if I as a gay male feel uncomfortable with what is going on, I can only imagine how uncomfortable and scared straight people feel. How uncomfortable and scared straight people feel at what is being done to their children, to themselves, and to the public that they live in. Because people are afraid to misgender somebody and get their entire lives ruined. Because all it takes is sir instead of it's ma'am. And all of a sudden, you're being accused of committing a hate crime. More on that in a second. Trans people just want to live their lives. Trans people want to blend into society. They want to go from being the gender they were to the gender they feel after going through gender-affirming care. Now, I'm not against gender-affirming care when it's for people above 18 plus, when it's for adults, adults who have had extensive psychiatric evaluation. Do you know why? Do you know why I believe that? I believe that because I strongly believe in science. And if this is a medically studied phenomenon, a medically studied phenomenon that has been determined to be alleviated through transition, there is no reason for me not to support people being able to live their lives as comfortable as possible. At the end of the day, I believe in free will. I believe in freedom to do as you please and freedom of speech. And part of that is allowing adults to make their own decisions about their bodies, which is why I respect real trans people going to ge through gender dysphoria. And again, trans people who are transitioning. There's a reason why the word is trans, trans, Ishin, trans transition girl i don't know about y'all but i learned about root words a very long time ago when i was in school i learned about those words when i was in like high school 
And there's a reason why they put certain root words in the beginning. They're kind of context clues as to what the word actually means. Trans being transition as in you went from gen one gender to another, which is why if you call yourself a they, them, you're not transgender. You're your own thing, sweetie. You're your own thing. Don't, don't group everybody else into your thing. You do your own thing. You do your own thing. Us gay people, we're not grouping straight people into our thing. You do your own thing. You do your own thing. You're your own group, baby. Your own group. If you want your rights, you get your own group. My point is, is that trans people don't want special privileges. They don't want to have the authority to attack somebody at a protest and be allowed to do that without any sort of repercussions. They want to be able to go to the grocery store, buy some food for their spouse, cook some dinner, enjoy a nice meal after a long day of work and go to sleep. They want to live their life just like anybody else. They're not looking for special privileges to attack people they disagree with. That's what, that's what fascists do. That's what Nazis do. That's what fascists do. And interestingly enough, before anyone tries to say that trans people are acting this way because they're under attack, let's touch on this topic because I think it's a good one. I think it's an interesting one. First, let me show you a video that is relevant to my point taken from the borderline insurrection that occurred at the Tennessee Capitol during a trans protest. I believe this happened last weekend. No, last week. I think it happened mid last week, something around that time. Um, let me show you the clip and we'll talk in a sec. First of all, seeing the look in this young girl's face as she is being used as a political pawn is genuinely heartbreaking to me. These are the children of America. They are quite literally the most important citizens in this country. This is our next generation of leaders, doctors, journalists, thinkers, engineers, the future of America in human form. There is quite literally nothing more important than securing their safety and protection. Second of all, let's touch on what was said in that video. In fact, let's talk about the most important thing said in that video. Quote, first you hated black people, then you hated Jews. Let me ask you a simple question. When was the last time that you saw a trans person lynched on a tree or gassed in a gas chamber. I'll wait. It is disgusting, disgusting to make such a comparison. It is disgusting to make that comparison. I'll be frank with you. I saw that video for the first time just about two or three days ago, and I got goosebumps because I I genuinely could not believe that that was being said in a government facility. I genuinely could not believe after having things like Juneteenth, after having things like Holocaust Remembrance Day, to have an 
educated, allegedly educated, elected government official mock black and Jewish people over the banning of trans people, a misconception that people have that trans people are being banned because there are certain states that are, instead of going forward on making it easier for trans children to transition, they're making it harder. They're making it harder because these children end up regretting these things. The detransitioners Reddit, the last time I checked, had more than 44,000 individual members added to it. 44,000 individual detransitioners on that site. Now, not everybody on there might be a detransitioner. There might just be uh, there might just be people who are curious about the topic. However, given half of those people, given a third of those people, that's like 20,000 people. It's not as rare as people think it is. Being transgender is already rare enough. Being a detransitioner is not as rare as people might think. And that's why they're making it harder. They're also making it harder because these children are not allowed to smoke cigarettes under the age of 21 in most states anymore. These children are not able to have plastic surgery under the age of 18 in pretty much all states without parent permission or some sort of risk to health. Why wouldn't it make sense for something like this to have a limit? Why wouldn't it make sense for a child not to be able to mutilate themselves? Which, by the way, is happening in some states. Flash that up here. These things are happening, and people are pretending like it's not. Oh, oh, but if you, if you do say something about it, if you protest peacefully, you'll get your shit punched in because somebody doesn't agree with you. You'll get your shit punched in because a violent man doesn't agree with you. And again, these are just two incidents. These things have happened so many times. There's a video that I talked about in one of my podcasts a few weeks ago where this feminist group was protesting and these random alleged trans people showed up and just attacked these women. I'll show you the clip. Roll it. Transgender activists versus lesbian feminists. It went down as a protest and it started peacefully. We are not out here to engage right now with the public. We're doing a silent protest, but you are can you? go to the website of this okay. organization and you can read all about it. This was the quiet before the storm. But like many protests, it went from peaceful to mostly peaceful in a matter of seconds. So after seeing all of this and seeing where the violence is coming from, do you really think that it's safe to assume and, and make the comparison that first you hated black people, then you hated Jews, and now apparently, I guess, according to that logic, people are coming for trans people? So apparently, um, this is going to be written in the history books. The genocide of trans people is going to be written in history books. This seems to be like a massive attempt to attack the trans community. All of these numbers, you know, like I was walking down the street the other day and I, I, I saw so many people just laying on the floor. It was it was such a violent, such a violent, violent, violent place to live in anywhere you live in America, because it's just so dangerous for trans people. Not only said nobody ever except these psychopath lunatics who are acting like this is a thing, but said the statistics. We'll discuss the statistics in just a second, but I still haven't hammered the point in enough. But the fact that a government official make the comparison that people are coming for trans people the same way that they came for black people and Jewish people in, in history. So the hundreds of songs, art pieces that come from those eras, we're, we're going to have, of course, many of those in about... 60 years we'll have a lot of trans artifact artifacts from you know uh a song that was made in protest 
We're going to have a song analyzing the, um, you know, the issues that happened during this tumultuous and crazy, dangerous time for trans people. Nina Simone is going to come back to life and she's going to make, you know, a new rendition of Strange Fruit. Uh, this one's going to be called Stranger Fruits. Um, you know, I'm not going to elaborate on that one. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so now that we've talked about the ridiculous comparison that apparently there's some sort of attack on trans people, I feel like giving you my opinion on that and telling you that it's a bunch of bullshit is not enough. So at this point, let's discuss numbers. So by comparison, more people die of bee stings every year than trans murders are reported. So according to this, there are about 62 fatal deaths of bee stings every year. Now, by comparison, there was about 38 transgender people that lost their lives in 2022. Now, I'm not saying that that's okay, that those people lost their lives. What I'm saying is that it doesn't point towards any sort of attack on trans people. There's no such thing as trans people being under attack. It's just not happening. The statistics do not point towards that. They just don't. And this is the same group of people that loves to point to science and what the researchers are saying and what this and what that. These are statistics. Good luck refuting them. So with this said... Under attack is just another buzzword. It's just another media buzzword. That's literally all it is. It's just a media buzzword to bait your emotions and make you think that you're under attack and that people hate you when they actually don't. Alexa, turn the lights on. Isolated, bigoted incidents do not a norm make. Misgendering someone, whether on purpose or by accident, is not a hate crime. It's just not. It's not a fucking hate crime. Like I was telling you earlier, do you think I'm going to press charges every time somebody at my job misgenders me like they do all the time they think i'm a girl because of my voice you think i'm gonna go ahead and go out of my way to be like you're misgendering me you think i'm gonna report that to my boss no she's gonna think i'm a weak little bitch and she's gonna fucking fire me rightfully so because if i can't let shit go about something so dumb in a corporate office why the fuck would she want to keep me around these children that are being used as political pawns for this ideology are going to have a really hard time joining the workforce in a few years. And they're then going to realize that they were brainwashed into stupidity. Only then. But at the end of the day, there's no way around it. Misgendering somebody is not a hate crime. Lynching someone on a tree for being black is a hate crime. Killing somebody for their religious heritage is a hate crime. So by this logic, applying the terminology of being under attack for 38 deaths reported. Again, I'm not taking the deaths as a joke. I'm not going ahead and saying that it was okay. What I'm saying is that if we're using just the numbers, if we're applying this same logic to other things in similar number ranges... Should, and this is a fair question, should we start a nationwide government-funded operation to remove the stingers of bees and instead provide Americans with sensitivity training to handle when people get stung? Maybe have government-funded stinger removals, maybe have government-funded stinger changes. I don't know, maybe chemicals to suppress the development of stingers. But again, more people die due to bees than due to being trans. Why? Because nobody fucking cares that you're trans. Think about it. How many transgender people could you possibly have passed by on the street and never even have noticed? There are trans people who you can't tell are transgender at all because they pass 100%. Speak to those same exact trans people and they pass for a reason. Because they want to blend into society and live their lives just like everybody else. They don't want to put on a show like these men in wigs. And the last thing that I want to talk about is something that every gay person or every LGBT person should be used to at this point. Apparently the T has lost all sense of reality now that everybody is identifying as transgender instead of actually getting themselves diagnosed with a fucking psychologist. Everybody is used to the religious protests that they have at pride festivals. Every single pride festival that you go to when you go to these festivals uh 
some part of the festival, there's going to be a group of people with signs that say God hates fags or repent or uh, you're going to hell, you're going to burn in hell or whatever. At all of these pride festivals, these religious people show up and they they do show up saying that we're going to burn in hell. Not like Chris Elston, I believe that was his name, just standing there with a sign. No, they actually go ahead and show up with signs that say you're going to burn in hell and you're going to this and this. We're not talking about Chris Elston showing up with signs that say what a father is. No, these people are actually saying you're going to burn in hell. Go online on YouTube and try to find a video of anybody at these pride festivals attacking these religious protesters. Go ahead. Find a video of people at pride festivals. Gay people at pride festivals. Used to be back then gay people, trans people, lesbians. Go and find one. It it doesn't exist. And you know why it doesn't exist? Because we are the group of tolerance and love and acceptance and peace and this and that. Which is why seeing the video of Chris being assaulted by this man in a wig, this alleged trans individual, disgusted me so much. Because it's not the first time that I see people protesting against each other. It's not the first time, but it's the first time that I've seen somebody be so violent. It is definitely the first time. I remember a few years ago seeing these protesters and seeing how, you know, people wouldn't viciously and physically attack them. They would literally go up to the protesters. They would kiss their their significant other in front of them. They would kiss them in front of them. It's a pride festival. Hello. What, what a surprise. They would kiss them in front of them. They would take pictures. They would laugh. They would dance in in the area in front of them. They would just enjoy themselves. They would just enjoy themselves. They would just be themselves. That's it. There was no fighting. There was no hitting. There was no assaults reported. There was no lack of regard for human decency and human respect. It was people dancing and having fun, offense, and people who disagreed with signs. Do I agree with the messages of the signs? No, I would be telling myself that I'm going to hell. And I, and I don't think I'm going to hell. And I don't think you, as a trans individual, if you're watching this, I don't think you're going to hell either. But I think that you're going to have a really, really hard life if you lead your life like a weak little bitch. I, I think you're going to have a really hard time. I think you are. Because I come from the generation of the Westboro Baptist Church. Y'all remember that? You wanna lie to them in hell, you wanna be. A little fire is all fun when you're with me, God hates you. Yeah, I, I come from the generation of the Westboro Baptist Church where these people were genuine assholes. Like, they were actually assholes. They were, they, they were an extremist religious group. And even then, they were not met with violence. And I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of this house. I've heard of the house. But this was made in response to the Westboro Baptist Church. It's called, I mean, I'm calling it the Pride House because that's, I mean, hello. It was made in response to the Westboro Baptist Church. And this is what happens when you use your creativity, your love, your compassion for good. When you protest peacefully. When you make your voice not just heard, but a permanent marker of history. You see, because in a few months, that man in a wig who attacked Chris is going to be forgotten about. Chris's career is going to continue to skyrocket and skyrocket and skyrocket. And that person will probably end up in a jail cell if they continue on this emotional path that they're going through. They will end up in a jail cell because that's what happens to violent people. They go to jail. At one point or another, they go to jail because a little bit of violence just isn't enough. Do you think, do you seriously think after going from it's ma'am to now going to this, you don't think the segue is going to continue? You seriously don't see it continuing. It is going to continue and it is going to get much, much worse, which is why you need to open up your mouth, not just to talk shit, open up your mouth and make a difference. Do not let anybody push you into submission, into thinking that this is okay, or this is some sort of acceptable kind of behavior. The behavior that this person exhibited, that these people exhibited in these videos are disgusting. Disgusting. They're an embarrassment to the LGBT community. They're an embarrassment to themselves. They're an embarrassment to their families. And they're an embarrassment for the foundation of equality that this community based itself off of. They are an embarrassment.
There is a reason why there are memes like this going viral on social media. It's always been LGBT. What are we doing, guys? What are we doing? I'm not part of this community anymore. This isn't my community. You're not part of my community. This is not what I signed up for. This is not what I signed up for. It's, it's not. This is not the community that I signed up for. I'm done with the community. I don't need a community to be gay. Being gay is just who I am. It's, again, not a personality trait. It's not a personality trait. When I wake up in the morning, my name is Daniel. My name is not gay. When I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is look at my fucking cat. When I wake up in the morning, my first thought is, oh, here I am. To see this community go from being the examples of acceptance and equality and be being known for having fun pride festivals and being trailblazers for equality, seeing this sharp turn into the genital mutilation of children, into using children as political pawns, into making everybody question their gender. And, and I do mean making everybody question their gender. I saw a comment on some Instagram video the other day. This was a comment. They're making everybody question everything just because they like makeup or I like makeup too. I think makeup is cool. I like colors. I want a makeup company, Danny Moon Cosmetics. I want a makeup company, but I want a makeup company that doesn't make me a girl. It makes me a guy who likes something feminine. Fucking sue me. Fucking sue me. Am I going to go cut off my fucking dick? No, I'm not going to cut off my fucking dick because it's okay for me to be a guy and like feminine things. That's okay. It doesn't make me a fucking girl. Just like you being a woman who likes gardening doesn't make you a fucking man because you like to be outside and be in the dirt. Like by that logic, we would all be on our fucking heads at that point. We've always been a community of peace and not violence. So, bitch, in the name of fucking Jesus, I fucking rebuke you. You are not part of my community. My community doesn't stand for this level of violence and intolerance. Real trans people don't stand for this level of violence. Again, they want to fit in and be like everyone else. Our movement has always been about love and loving who you want to love. Pride was started as a way to protest in peace, a literal colorful parade. There is nothing colorful about giving somebody a black eye. There is nothing colorful about lying to kids and making them think that the world hates them when it doesn't. When the statistics don't prove that. Misgendering somebody is not a hate crime. It is not hating on these children. There's nothing colorful about lying to these children and trying to teach them that the world hates them for who they are. When we don't, we're concerned because they're being used as political pawns. And that is a true American horror story. Thank you for watching Cancelled Conversations. Like and subscribe if I made you think. I'll see you on the next one.